about what to do for a bee sting. I did the thing on how to avoid getting stung. Now we know what you're gonna do to when it happens. If you look back at my YouTubes on Sweet Life number two, 47 years ago, my mother was stung by a bee. I was 12 years old, and she actually ended up dying from the bee sting from an anaphylactic shock because no one knew what to do. Now you're gonna know what to do and what to recognize as emergencies and so forth. Now, bee stings are rare. It's rare to be, I shouldn't say they're rare, but it's rare to be allergic to a bee sting. You don't hear a lot of people being stung and dying from them. It's about 50 to 100 per year. Um, that's two to 5% of the population, which is about one in 20 million. But 14% of beekeepers are allergic and 10% of their families are allergic, which I find to be a little higher than I thought it would be. And my, of course, my mom was the wife of a beekeeper. So be sure and check that YouTube on my sweet life number two so you can kind of see what happened there. Now when you get stung by a bee, it feels, can you see this pin? It feels like a pin is poking you and immediately it begins to be red and hot, swelling usually, that's the signs of it happening. Now the first thing you wanna do is you wanna remain calm. Go back and review my YouTube on how to avoid getting stung so you know how not to happen in the first place. But you gotta remain calm and get off to a safe side away from the other bees. Then you're going to take a credit card because you're not going to pull out that stinger. There's a difference between bees and wasps. Wasps have a straight stinger and they just keep going in and in. They can see as many times. Bees have a barbed one. And so you want to just scrape that off, which I can't show you because I have a broken uh, humerus right now. My um, top is cracked right there. But you're going to scrape the bee sting with a credit card. That's one of the best things, or a plastic card like that. Because if you leave the stinger there, you go to pull it out, you're actually pushing in all the venom because they leave behind a little venom sac. So now that you know that part. Uh, the next thing you wanna do for treatment is you wanna apply ice to the area. Now, I was often in the bee yard uh, or someplace where you couldn't have access to any of these things. And so my dad would take and mix mud and he would put mud on my sting. And that was like a really natural curing part. He also would put honey, that's another thing, honey was in there. So you wanna put ice on it. And then I'm gonna talk about some other treatments besides the ice and the mud that you can put on it. All right, so we're gonna go into some treatments. You, of course, can apply the ice. We talked about that. And I talked about my dad using honey on it. You can use the aloe vera plant. That's a really good one. These are some natural things you'll have at home. You can also put a paste with baking soda, a meat tenderizer, which my sister swears by this on even any insect bite. So that's kind of cool. Apple cider vinegar is another one. I actually have not done this one, but I've read a lot of people that have. We're into essential oils lately these days, and so my daughter zoom in on that. We've got lavender. We've got tea tree oil and melaleuca. Those are some really good ones for insect stings. You wanna be sure and wash the area, very nice, with soap and water. Uh, you can apply some hydrocortisone onto it. If you have an EpiPen, Epi you've been prescribed that. You could use that, but you have to, of course, you have the prescription. Now I wanna talk a little bit about here how to recognize that you have an emergency and be ready to call for help. If you see any signs of the following, loss of consciousness, definitely that. Hives, if they look pale, if they're itching, excessively itching, their breathing starts to um, become very hard to breathe. Uh, they start to swell on their tongue and throat, especially if they have a rapid pulse or they become nauseous, they're like throwing up or they have diarrhea or they're dizzy. Any of those signs, there's 10 signs there you need to call that their pulse is going at a rapid pace. Any of those emergency call for help. Now, like I said, that is very rare that that happens. So if they're having pain and swelling, some other things you can do, and I'll have my daughter zoom in on this, is um, we've got Tylenol and ibuprofen, and of course Benadryl. Benadryl was always in my home because my mother had always been allergic to bees. You can even see the picture of her out in the bees, which I think was very brave. Once you get these things in your system, then elevate the area, whether it's on your leg, which happens a lot on the feet and the legs, you can elevate it. Put ice on it with your arm, if it's on the arm, and don't scratch the area. 
try to stay away from that. And can you guess where the number one area to be stung? It's the most painful. They took this survey and I thought of a lot of areas that would be very painful. But the number one area was, did you guess it? The nose and the nostril right here. That would hurt. I remember once my dad got stung on his tongue because he was eating a hamburger and I think he was kind of showing off. He put a bee there and it actually stung him on his tongue. But he didn't swell up that much. Ah, that was my dad. So you could probably think of some others. Grandchildren, did you find the bee? On oh, my very expensive sling here. Right there. There it was there the whole time. So be sure to subscribe to my channel. Share this with other people so they know what to do when they're stung by a bee. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and also on Instagram. So have a sweet day and stay away from the bee stings.